हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी डू कंसीडर सब्सक्राइबिंग माय चैनल दैट विल हेल्प मी टू रीच आउट मेनी मोर स्टूडेंट्स अराउंड द वर्ल्ड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम इट सेज दैट नोइंग दैट द टेंशन इन केबल ए सी इज ट्वेंटी न्यूटन डिटर्मिन द कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ द फोर्स एक्सर्टेड ऑन द प्लेट एट सी सो द टेंशन इन दिस केबल ए सी इज गिवन एंड वी आर आज टू फाइंड द कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ दिस टेंशन एट दिस पॉइंट सी so if we cut this rope somewhere here then the tension in this rope will be uh, applying a force on that point c in this direction so we will have the the tension from c to a so let me represent that tension so we will have the tension from c to a like this this will be the tension from C to A, and we are asked to find the components, right? So this tension from C to A uh, will have one component in the negative x like this, since uh, this point A is in the negative x direction from this point C. So this tension from C to A is pointing out in the negative x direction. It is going from C to A in the negative x. So it will have one component in the negative x. it will have one component in the z a negative z and it will have one component in the positive y so we are, so we are asked to find the magnitudes of all the components so now we have um, we know that the tension from c to a vector this can always be written as the magnitude times the unit vector so the magnitude of the tension from c to a times the unit vector from c to a so lambda is the unit vector from c to a and the magnitude is given which is 2130 so the magnitude of the tension from c to a is 2130 newton and we know that the unit vector from c to a will be the position vector from c to a divided by the magnitude of the position vector from c to a now we have to find the position vector from c to a So now it's very easy I have discussed this in the previous video as well you you guys can always go and watch that video in detail so I I'm going to use that same method to find the position vector from C to A so I have discussed this in the previous video and I have told you guys that in order to find the position vector from C to A always start from the first point and uh, travel along your free body diagram from C uh in the x y and z to reach that point A to reach the second point so it's just like a game we will start from point c and we will travel along the x y and z axis parallel to the x y and z axis and we'll try to reach this point a so to reach that point a from point c we will travel this uh, 900 mm distance and this this travel is in the negative x this is the positive x so we have traveled 900 mm distance in the negative x so this distance so first we have traveled this distance in the negative x then i will travel this distance in the positive j this distance is 600 mm so first we have traveled this distance then we have traveled this distance and then we will travel this distance and this distance is 920 mm and this is this travel is in the negative z towards this side is positive z this is in the negative z so again i'm going to uh explain it that from point c we need to travel 900 mm in the parallel to the x axis but in the negative x direction then we will travel 600 mm distance in the positive y parallel to the positive y and then we will travel this distance in the negative z this is 920 mm so we can write that the um the vector the tension from c to a vector is 2130 multiplied by the position vector from c to a So first 900 mm in the negative i, 600 mm in the positive j, and 300 uh, 920 mm in the negative k. So I will write minus 900 i plus 600 j and minus 920 k. So this is the position vector from C to A. Now we can. i have dis uh, i have already discussed that the position vector from c to a will always tell us the position of point a relative to point c 
and these are the components of the position vector from C to A. So this 900 mm tells us that this point A is um, 900 mm apart from point C in the x direction, right? If we if we look into these two points from this side, so the distance between point A and C along the x-axis is 900 mm. So this is that 900 mm. And if we observe uh, this point C and A from this direction, so they are 920 mm apart in along the z-axis. So this is 920. And again, if we observe from this side, so they are 600 mm apart, right? Point C is on this surface and point A is 600 mm above this point C. So we can say that point A is at a distance of 600 mm from point C along the positive y direction. Or let's say if, if I draw the diagram, if, um, if I draw the free body diagram, if I draw this from this side, if I draw the side view, so this will be the triangle, right? This will be point C corner and this will be point D and somewhere here will be our point A. Let me write, this is point A somewhere here. And this is the side view from this side, right? So we are looking to this whole system from this side. So now this distance is 900 mm. And this distance is uh, 600 mm. And this will, the x-axis is like this. This is our point O. So we can say if we look from this side, then D and O, both of these points will coincide. So we can say that point O is here as well. We can say that this is that point O as well. So the x-axis is like this. This is the x-axis and the y-axis is like this and the z-axis is out of the screen. So we can say that this is our positive x and this is our, let me write in some other color. So this is our positive y-axis. Now the separation between point C and A along the x-axis is 900 mm and point C and A, they are 600 mm apart in the y direction. So that is why we have 900 and 600, 900 in the negative i, right? Since this point A is towards the left, so, so towards the left is the negative x direction, right? If, if this point A was somewhere here, then, then we would say that 900 mm in the positive x and similarly if we if i draw the free body uh, if i draw this side view let's say so we will have the diagram like this now we from this point b and we will see point c and let's say that somewhere here is point A, right? And then the x-axis is out of the screen now. The x-axis is out of the screen. And somewhere here will be our origin as well. Now this point B and O, they will coincide. So we can say that um, here I have that point O. And now this is my z-axis. You guys can see that from from O to D is our x-axis and now this point C and point D they will coincide as well right so this point C and on the back of this point C is point D as well so we can say that somewhere here is point D as well so from O to D is our positive z-axis so this is our positive z and this is our positive y perpendicular to the plate surface is the y-axis so now we can see that the distance between point C and A along the z-axis is this distance, which is 920. And the distance between point C and A along the y-axis is that 600 mm. 
So this is the position vector. I hope uh, this explanation will help you to understand the significance of the position vector and how we can find it by traveling from by starting uh, traveling from point C and we'll try to reach that point A. So the magnitude of the position vector from C to A will be we can always use the Pythagoras theorem. So this will be 900 square taking the sum of the squares of all the components and then taking the square root. So take 900 square plus 600 square plus 920 square and taking the square root, right? Uh, never care about the negative sign while finding the magnitude since taking the square of the negative will, will always give us positive. So this will be the magnitude. We can find the magnitude that will be 900 square plus 600 square plus 920 square. So this gives me 1420. Now this length is, this is the magnitude is 1420 mm. All these distances are in mm, so, so the magnitude will be also in mm. And now this 1420 mm tells us that this point C, the, the direct distance between point C and A is 1420 mm. So the magnitude of the position vector always tells us the direct distance between those two points. Now we can say that um, the tension from C to A, this will be equal to 2130 multiplied by minus 900 divided by 1420. Now we need to divide all of these components by this magnitude and multiply by this magnitude. So minus 920, um, minus 900 divided by 1420 into I plus 2130 into 600 divided by 1420 J and this will be plus 2130 minus 920 divided by 1420 K. So now we can say that Twenty-one thirty multiplied by uh, minus nine hundred divided by fourteen hundred twenty. So this gives me minus thirteen fifty i plus six hundred divided by fourteen twenty is plus nine hundred j. And minus 920 so that is minus 1300 K so this is the Cartesian vector representation of the tension from C to A and the units will be in Newtons since the units of this position vector is in mm and the magnitude is also in mm so mm will cancel out with mm and we will be left with the magnitude of newton right this is in mm this is in mm will cancel out so we'll be left with the units of newton now these are the components of the tension from c to a so the the x component of the tension from c to a is minus 1350 so we will have the x component in the negative x so that is why we have the minus sign and this the magnitude of this component is 1350 newton then we will have the positive component 900 so we will have the component in the positive j and then we will have the negative component so that is like this and then the magnitude is 1380 so the x component is we can say that the x component of the tension from c to a is minus 1350 newton the y component is 900 newton uh, sorry this is the magnitude right so there is no need to write the arrow and similarly, the Z component is minus 1380 Newton. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope all this explanation will help you in your learning and understanding how to find the position vector and how to find the components of a, of a given vector between any two points.
do subscribe engineers academy that will help me to grow my channel and that will help also to reach many more students around the world